All right. With us right now, we've got Patty Dominguez. Patty, you are uh, you help small business owners achieve a category of one status through the power of prolific positioning. That's that's a lot of P's right there. Uh, there but is. so important. You're the founder of Positioning to Profit. Patty, I'm so excited for this conversation because this is something I believe so strongly in. And honestly, it's it's one of the things I see so consistently among, I would say, more junior level uh, business owners and, and entrepreneurs is they really haven't positioned themselves well. Uh, and so therefore, they're really hurting themselves. And we're going to talk all about that. Patty, thank you so much for joining us. Josh, thank you so much for having me. This is going to be a really good conversation because right before we're like, oh, this is going to be good. So we're setting the intention and that is absolutely mine. Yeah. So where did you, how did you get into this field? You, you actually have a, a, going through your LinkedIn, uh, it's, it's quite a who's who of, of, you know, who you've been able to work with in the past. I know. I don't look a day over 28 either. Isn't it amazing? Um, <laughs> But basically, my, my corporate background is pretty extensive. I was fortunate enough because I'm in Chicago, uh, able to work with big companies and kind of growing up through the ranks. Um, I first started out in direct, um, in direct response, direct mail. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably not on my LinkedIn because that would really age me. Um, but basically going through that, I did land at Kraft Foods um, back in the day and I did two stints there. And really the, I was really lucky to have a couple of people coaching me within the organization to say, it's really important for you to get cross-functional experience to get the full gamut. So long story short, but fast forward in between, um, I did like I got my master's and I worked on different projects uh, within the organization. I worked in consulting. I really had the good fortune of working with some very, very brilliant people from some of the biggest conglomerates um, agency. So I've seen big brand launches uh, in mm -hmm. a number of different projects. And that's really where this whole thing synthesized when I left my job in January of 2013 to understand like, wow, what I'm not seeing in the small business um, arena and the solopreneur arena is positioning. I had a little bit of a struggle though um, in full transparency because I would say branding and people think of branding as the visual element such as the logo and the website and this and that. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not a graphic designer. So I had to work on my own positioning and, and put it in a way that made sense to the end consumer, right? To, the end, to my premium prospect. And so I really started focusing on positioning and all that means is you have to really recognize that you, your own as a solopreneur or a coach, a small business owner, the only way to set yourself apart is to have clear distinction in the marketplace. And I can always tell when somebody doesn't have their positioning in place right away. Yeah, you know, I remember reading the the book came out in 2001. I, I read it what right when it came out. It, it's... Uh, positioning the battle for your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's one you've read by Al Reese and Jack Trout. Yes, of course. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of the seminal, uh, you know, uh, you know, when I heard about that, I'm like, oh, this makes so much sense. Can you give us a quick, uh, Patty, and I respect your uh, authority in, in this field. Can you give us a quick primer in what positioning is? Yeah. So positioning is basically um, capturing mindshare. Okay, capturing mindshare in the mind of your premium prospect. So when somebody says to me, and I can always tell, what do you do? And if you're saying, oh, I'm an author, I'm a coach, you have literally commoditized yourself. You've put yeah. yourself in this imagine, and we've all heard and understand the visual of this bloody ocean. And you're just literally in the bloody ocean, not setting yourself apart, right? So the big opportunity is capturing mindshare. Mindshare is where when somebody says, you know, I'm looking for a business coach, or I'm looking for a psychologist, or I'm looking for a chiropractor, what have you, that premium prospect should be able to tell your thing like, yep, that's that's the one. That's the person to go to. And so capturing mindshare, getting inside the head of your premium prospect, entering the conversation that's happening in their head, that's how you connect the dots for them so that you are seen as a solution provider. And, and, it just, and, it, and it's really an interesting dynamic as well, because as much as people have their certifications and their masters and more degrees in a thermometer, for the average person that is on the receiving end, they don't care about that. Those are what I call cost of entry elements, but the distinct 
um, the, the positioning, the distinction comes when you're able to meet their needs in that moment and really seeing and having a clear solution in their head to be like, oh, and the magic is when you tell somebody what you do and if they say to you, tell me more about that, that's when you know it's gold. Oh, um, and talk about reap that one concept I like as well. And can I be honest? You do a really good job at this. I'm looking at your prolific dot cafe um, page. You. you do a very good job at repositioning the competition. <laughs> Tell me about that. Thank you. Yeah. So it's basically um, the idea behind that is imagine conventional wisdom around just these industry norms or basic fundamental thought processes that people have, right? Like, oh, I got to get a course in order for me to, in order for me to have an online business. And, uh, and what you can do is pattern break that, is flip the script, right? Turn that one thought around and say, if you're looking for another product at 997, I got to tell you, you're wasting your money. Mm. What do you mean by that, right? Or if, if you think that getting that certification is going to get you to that, uh, more exposure um, to, in creating more leads, you're wrong. That's not what you're missing, right? And so it's not a matter of um, being a contrarian. It's a matter of creating a distinct pattern break where somebody's thinking about something like, tell me more about that. I mean, truly, whenever I do my marketing, I always say, is this inciting curiosity? Because when you help incite curiosity in that person's brain, they are getting to the epiphany before you're telling them the thing. So people want to own that, that discovery, right? And in that discovery, we'd be like, oh my God, guess what I found? This is so amazing. I found this thing or whatever. They feel like they're the hero, right? Like they're the ones that like uncovered a secret. And so the magic in doing that is like, you want to help people get to their own epiphany on their own. And mm. one of the ways to do that is to create a pattern break in the conversation that's happening in their head, like debunking a common myth, um, putting a new spin on an idea, being a contrarian, but really strategically, not, you know, not to be uh, always argue it. I mean, that's definitely not the intention. The intention is what is a new conversation that you can have? Yeah, terrific. Um, so Patty, tell me about the clients that you work with and what is the outcome that you help them create? Really? And more, most importantly, actually, yeah. let me rephrase my question. What is the pain that you solve? Yes. Yeah, so the idea behind that is that most people don't understand how to distill their message in a way that makes sense for that end ideal customer. And basically what it means is like, I have these different elements. I believe positioning is comprised of two distinct things, right? The first is an external framework. And I can literally show you the external framework that I've been able to take from my corporate days, working with big brands, endless uh, conversations around these boardrooms, around how do we launch this product? And I always give this explanation of, we used to sit on boardrooms with like massive amounts of people like high level in order to introduce one of the last projects I did was for a chocolate chip cookie. So I'm like, guys, we do this for a cookie and we don't do it for ourselves. And one of these elements is talking about this idea of what I call personalization at scale, right? Is even though we are in an online world, certainly the case for us now is that we don't have the, the uh, ability to be like, belly to belly necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so you want to leverage your time by putting the message that you have out there on video. So how do you do that in a way that's really compelling? So what we talk about is having a very intimate understanding and we've heard about, you know, your avatar and this and that, but we will really want to put it in a way where they're seeing you as the solution. Why? Because you are the one that understands why they do what they do. See, people go at people buy based on emotion, and that's what mm. most people don't understand. Yeah. And the other side of it is that people buy for joy or pain. I don't know if you've ever heard that song by Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Joy exactly. and pain got sunshine and, and pain. pain. <laughs> Josh, literally always think of that. Like, yeah. is this... Because people run to pleasure or joy and they run away from pain. So oh, ask man. yourself with the solution that you have, are you helping your customer, right, get or move to joy or run away from pain? And that's how I do it. I do like these little distinct markers um, in people's head. I'm like, is this joy or pain, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh man, I so want to hear that song right now. Okay, so here's <laughs> everybody load up your Spotify and find yes. it's on the album It Takes Two by Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. Rock, which, rock, which rock. exactly, which it takes two is like the quintessential rap that like everybody. Yeah. If if you're a Gen Xer, you yes. definitely know yeah. DJ Easy Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is great. Okay, so um, now look, I'm looking at your um prolific cafe. So on prolific cafe slash plus, um, can you tell me a little bit about that program, how that works? And by the way, I got to tell you that um, I really love your uh like i'm going through and just kind of like scanning some of your copy and your branding on here really really great stuff you eat your own lunch <laughs> Thank you. thanks josh thanks i mean really more than anything prolific cafe is like it's um it's a club is my vision for what i really want to build at a grander scale every business should have especially in this day and age so this is going away from position a little bit is continuity Right. So as a solopreneur, ask yourself, what kind of continuity do I have in in the business that I have? So while somebody comes in and I talk to them about positioning, once you have your positioning in place, then organically, there's going to be a high percentage of people. If you've delivered on the promise, if you've delivered on what you said you're going to do, that's really my flagship signature product. And then somebody would say, OK, now what's next, Patty? So I wanted to build more scale in my business. So this is my group. Uh, it's my group club, right? So I'm, I'm in there every single week answering these types of questions. I mean, I've been in the marketing game, institutional marketing and direct response, right? Since 2013. So I have a lot of different ideas and I know a lot of different people that I can really connect the dots for people to say, once they have that, I want them to find a safe space w without the fluff and with all the BS that you see out there and the over promising mm -hmm. and say, rooted in marketing principles, let's have a discussion around what makes sense for you to do now. Right. So if it's creating a course, I can talk to them about here are some options. Right. And really coming from a place of of and I know other people say that just being an integrity. So it's not it's just serving your people up the things that make sense for them. And I've done this before where I've had people say, oh, my God, I love you. Like I tell them, like, don't buy that. You don't need that. You don't need that. Mm -hmm. And even though I can make commission short term, long term, it's, it's, it's going to hurt my brand. Like, why would I do that? Right. Right. So really prolific Cafe is about this place where people can come on, ask their questions. I have AMAs, ask me anything. I have some courses in there, et cetera. So that really is intended to be after you have your positioning in place, join the club, so to speak. And then we yeah. keep the conversation going. Uh, so Patty, how do you think that this um, carries over to our own strategy for social media? I think positioning, so if we go back to positioning, it literally is, and we talked right before I hit the, the right before, before you hit the record button, it's not sexy, okay? But it's, it's the equivalent of literally building a house without, without um, paying for an architect, right? If you don't have an architect and the architect doesn't have the blueprint and the blueprint is not, is not done, the GC general contractor doesn't know where to build, how to build and to, and to have a solid foundation. That's exactly the equivalent. Now, most people, when you talk about social media, that is the equivalent of like, um, I want these really cool, or I want this awesome wallpaper or these really fancy curtains and that is all good, but let's take it back. And I said, okay, meet me upstream, meet me upstream because we need to have your positioning in place so that you use that as a foundation of how everything else is going to fall, right? How everything else then, then you know what to say on social media. Then you know what to say on podcast interviews, presentations, your flagship product, your house of brands, and all these other things that you're developing. It starts with positioning. Yeah. Uh, so in, in terms of websites, um, when you're looking at someone's website, what, uh, and, and maybe it's uh, someone that comes to you, do you see any common threads uh, that you're like, oh, I wish the world just knew, please stop doing this on your website and please start doing more of this. What do you think that would be? I think, um, and as a woman, I think I'm seeing way too much of Me Too, not the movement, Me Too in terms of like, 
and I uh, like this boss babe, lady boss, boss bitch, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of that and it just is like, ugh, it's more of the same, right? Mm. As opposed to saying like, what do I stand for? How can I help you? How can I serve? I think there's a little bit of confusion with saying, oh, okay, well that works. So let me do that. Like, mm. well, let me, I mean, I, I will never forget. Um, I was working with some clients and they had bought this branding package beforehand and it was this woman who was, you know, taking pictures and they were just like in the field. And then it was like with balloons and confetti. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like everyone's doing the same thing, right? How do you know that that's really true to the brand of what you want to represent? And it's not, a ma- it's not a matter of doing more of the same. It's a matter of distilling what you do again in a way that um, capture somebody's attention for them to say, tell me more about that. But if somebody is scanning and they're seeing the same thing, lady boss, boss, babe, this and that, blah, 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 that's already been done. Don't mm-hmm. do that. Cause then you're just doing the me too thing. I kind of feel bad because I don't mean me too by the movement. I mean like me too, like a copycat. Yeah. Right. 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 So. And I think that that's like. oh, absolutely a crutch, you know, like someone that starts a podcast, for example, well, I'm just going to do what someone else is doing because mm-hmm. it's work. It works. Exactly. It's like, it's a template I can follow. And you know, that might be okay to kind of get the wheels in motion, but I think, you know, why would somebody, if you have the exact same branding as somebody else and, and that other person that you're copying is way bigger than you, well, why would they work with you when they can just go to the original? <laughs> and so, and yeah, yeah. And the other side of it is understand what you're doing when you do the copycat approaches, all things considered, people are going to then make their decision based on price Hmm. because they're like, wait a minute, everything's the same. So now what is the next level of criteria? You've literally commoditized yourself. Hmm. So the next level of criteria is like, okay, let me see uh, who's cheaper, right? Because that's where the brain will go. uh, And so you're literally setting yourself up to play the price war game. And And to your point, that is a fast race to the bottom. And unless you are a raw material or something like that, where it's literally commoditized, then it doesn't make sense. There's no competitive advantage to being right in the middle because then you're just struggling. You're struggling on price. Yeah. Um, so, Patty, um, the, um, I'd say especially right now where uh, the world has been changed a bit. And I think that forever there's going to be new sensitivities. uh, And I hope that there's sensitivities that marketers pay attention to because it's amazing how many ads I've seen that like, man, they were not on top of that. And it just, I think some of the messaging is just so tone deaf right now. Mm -hmm. And um, what would you recommend in terms of, I think where you are observing, I mean, you have a background of working with big brands and I think Mm -hmm. big brands, hopefully have adjusted. Some of them have adjusted fairly quickly, thank goodness, because, mm-hmm. oh, it's so painful when you see an ad campaign that's like, oh, you know, right now people are holed up in their homes. You know, we've had so many deaths and so many people sick and people out of work and all that sort of thing. And here you are lounging on the hood of your sports car, you know, with, you know, stacks of cash all around you. I don't know. I don't think that's what you should be talking about right now. What, I agree. Where would you urge people to be a little bit more sensitive or kind of change their messaging a bit? Yeah, I agree. I think it's such poor decorum to do that. It's not just like the whole, okay, let's just reuse that. Um, I think a couple of examples that we could take a look at the big brand. So a couple of co- that come to mind, for example, Ford, right? The agency that does the Ford campaigns, I believe is like Wyden and Kennedy. And they um, were talking, or they were, they had in the queue um, some ads around um, a new car introduction. And instead they pulled back and said, what would make more sense, right? So they focused on the the tagline and the motto that they had about built strong, right? Built American strong. So the ethos of Ford is around American pride, right? Mm-hmm. And so what they did is they anchored that and they said, okay, what makes sense? Mm-hmm. Well, let's start the conversation around, you know what? Tough times are coming. Why don't we pay uh, no payments on your car for six months? Wow. Yeah, exactly. You're, I mean, I wow. remember I was sitting in my, I was sitting, I wasn't sitting, I was standing at home and I was like, the TV was on over here and I was like, what was that? Like, see what I mean? Yeah. What was that? Tell me more, right? Tell yeah. me more. 
Another great example is Little Caesars. They have these ovens and where the ovens looked impersonal, like they, there was this image once upon a time about somebody with that wood paddle, like um, grabbing the pizza from the pizza oven. It kind of gives that rustic yeah. like, feel for the pizza. Now the new discussion is we have these specific ovens where it's almost like it's super clean, germ-free, 500 degrees, we blast it, and then uh, it doesn't, it's not touching any hand, so super safe for you. Obviously, uh, I'm like, it's a clunky explanation, but the net net is that they want to show you that they're taking mm -hmm. precautions for people's safety. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so they're uncovering this need. They're anticipating what, what again, what's going on in people's heads yeah. that they would say, oh my gosh, that's so thoughtful that they did that. Right. Mm. So similarly to you. So how do you distill that to us, right? To solopreneurs or small business owners? Well, what's of concern to them? Right. So you're starting to see a lot of healthcare professionals say telehealth, right? Telehealth, we can help you that way. Yeah. That's anticipating the need. Yeah. Um, it's um, also, for example, I just saw a speech pathologist say, it's actually really cool because then parents say, oh, wow, this is saving me time, right? So I don't have to go into your practice. We can do a telehealth um, type of thing. Lots of different things that you can do in order to meet what are the hurdles, what are the obstacles, what are the pains that they're experiencing, and how do you anticipate and take it away for them so that they see you as like, wow, that was really thoughtful. They thought it through. Well, Patty Dominguez, you uh, you have a quiz on your front page, and it is the uh, Are You Positioned to Profit? Uh, so I'd highly recommend, I highly I took a look at that. I think that would be a great place uh, for people to start. You're also a podcast. You've got the Boss Free Society podcast. Uh, anything else that people should, uh, if they're like, yeah, I like this Patty Dominguez. She's a, <laughs> she's a smart cookie. Like, where where else should people engage with you? Uh, thank you. My Boss Free Society podcast is my once upon a time. We did about 140 episodes or so, mm -hmm. but my current one is Positioning to Profit. I have that podcast oh, on iTunes and everywhere else. So thank you. Yeah, positioningquiz.com is a great way to start because it really allows you to take the test. You get a PDF report um, sent to you and it kind of gives just a new perspective on why positioning is important. And then mm -hmm. out of the back end of that in my emails, you'll see a mini uh, positioning course you can really take advantage of. I used to charge for it. Now I'm just giving it away. So it'd be a great place to start. Yeah, love that. All right, well, Patty Dominguez, you are the founder of Positioning to Profit, your website, pattydominguez.com. That's D-O-M-I-N-G-U-E-Z.com. Patty, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you, Josh. This was a lot of fun.